Okay, it's Dr. Andrea Spina here, uh, functional, FunctionalAnatomySeminars.com. I'm here with Paul Fournier, who's the uh, head strength and conditioning coach for the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, we're going to go over a topic. I put up a, a post on YouTube not too long ago talking about foam rolling and why it's not exactly considered myofascial release. Now, I want to say that I wasn't saying that foam rolling was not an important tool to use. What I was saying was, by mechanism, it can't necessarily quote, release fascia or alter the long-term sculpting of connective tissue because of the time frame that it's used on. Connective tissue takes a lot more input, it takes a lot more time to actually cause plastic changes. So just rolling over an area superficially very quickly is not enough stimulus to actually lead to long-term plastic uh, changes or alterations in soft tissue structure. We can, however, alter the way that we do the rolling either on a ball or on a foam roller in order to better stimulate connective tissue alterations and long-term structural change. I'm going to demonstrate a few ways to do that right now. So I'm going to have Paul go on to his stomach, and we're going to assume maybe that there was a, uh, I don't know, rectus femoris tear or something, some kind of buildup of fibrotic tissue in that rectus femoris. So I am applying that ball onto that rectus femoris, and what we're going to do is we're going to use a partner. So we're going to take a partner, or if you're a coach, you're going to take your athlete, and instead of getting them to just roll across the surface of the skin, and I advise you to watch the first um, video uh, on this particular topic where I described why rolling on the surface of the skin cannot transmit forces along a particular direction and thus cannot cause any long-term uh, scul uh, sculpture changes of the tissue. But if I have him here and I'm applying a force down into that tissue, and we're going to sit here and we're going to passively move that tissue throughout a range. Now, I can ask him to just shift up a little bit, or I can ask him to change the direction of his pelvis in order to follow a particular line of tension. But you notice that I'm staying within this zone for a prolonged period of time. So I'm giving the fibroblasts, the cells that, that really are the ones that produce the connective tissue and reproduce new connective tissue, I'm giving them time to respond to my input as opposed to just rolling over it very quickly. I'm keeping load into that tissue, I'm giving directionality of the load by lengthening the tissue while the load is being applied, and then we're doing very small micro motions, changing the direction of the, of the, uh, the tissue load or of the tissue input. 